Two fantastic players, two guys that know how to break big as well. This should be a fascinating match, Chris. Really looking forward to this one. Yeah, match of uh, definitely the best match today and possibly of the first round. Certainly the one I was looking forward to the most when the draw came out. And I gave Jack William the build up with his break and he comes up dry with the first one. And the break is going to be a big element today, I think, in this match. Which player can get the most chances? Yeah, I think that's what it's going to come down to, is the break. Both players, great, great potters. Obviously, Gareth has won a lot more title-wise, but Jack's a brilliant player. Thanks for call. So that will be Gareth Potts with the first chance. And it, slightly awkward first glance, doesn't have a, a great first ball. We can take the yellow across the, the bottom cushion, but can't do a huge amount with it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Gareth kind of just lay up here and... I don't think there's any advantage in potting the yellow. That's exactly what he's done. No thought to potting that ball at all. Just turn the table back over to Jack Whelan. Purposely playing it into the jaws so it spits up the table. Yeah, now Jack's in a little bit of bother. We may see Jack clip off the yellow on the left-hand side and bring the cue ball roughly back where it is now. Extension call. Can he get the red through the gap at the top left hand side of the table? I'd be surprised if he can because the only reason I say that, it looks like the gap's there, but Gareth didn't move the cue ball and he would have known that. Yeah, and that's a poor shot there from Jack. Gareth's got a great opportunity here now to pot the red and he's only really got one red that's tied up red balls in play he's going to try and attack it as quickly as he can as he uh, can might be able to do it straight away yeah he really wants to pot the red in the center and cannon the yellow he doesn't want to hit the red that's perfect yeah, very delicate, very nicely played. And also while nudging the yellow away, it's developed the pocket for the red that's in the middle of the table next to the yellow. That will now go in the bottom left-hand corner. Horrible little touchy shots, those, when you're really close to them, but... You're not doing a huge amount with the cue ball, not, not too bad for Gareth. Hampered queuing once again. Just about drifts the cue ball far enough and in really good shape to get this first frame on the board. Yeah, and playing this red now, he can actually put the cue ball in a position where he's going to play for both reds. He'd like to be on the one to the left, into the bottom left-hand corner. Not quite perfect, but he'll take it. Just got to mind his work. The problem you get with these, Simon, is that you concentrate that much on position, you sometimes miss the pot. And that's exactly what's happened. Oh, he's oh, dropped. Oh, how has that dropped? That's incredible. That really is. You can see Sean Story in the background pulling a face there as that one wiped its feet and dropped in. No reaction from Gareth. I think he thought that was in all the way, but just about. Still not perfect. Hampered queuing. Yeah, and that one wasn't clean either. This will be killing Jack. Yeah, that was stra straight towards Jack as well. And 
Gareth Potts does manage to get that first frame on the board. Okay, wiped a couple wiped his feet, but an excellent little developing shot. And he is up and running 1-0 in this race to seven. 40-minute match as well. 30-second shot clock. We'll take a quick look at Gareth's profile. Ranked four after winning the seventh Pro Series event. It's great to see him return to the game after seven years away. He won his four, four world titles and then walked away from the game to focus on Chinese eight ball. It's great to have him back in the game and already up to fourth in the rankings. Having a nice little battle with you, Chris, in the rankings. I think you're fourth and fifth. Or are you third and fourth? Yeah, we've had a few next battles to each over other. the years. But I do know that Gareth's having problems with his back. You could see there in... In the pitch, he was stretching in the chair. Now we get to see Gareth's first break. He's been breaking very, very big and seeing some dramatic shots with his cue bending in all sorts of ways. And there you go again. You can see it on the main camera. It's incredible. Yeah, and just, just look at them. All the yellows together. Cue bending like crazy. I'm surprised it never snaps. It's incredible, isn't it? It really is. Excellent break, though. So, just having a good look at this red and yellow that are together by the left centre pocket. Extension call. Yeah, it must be tight because he'd, he'd normally get down straight away and pot that if it was if it was easy. Probably frightened about touching the red and or the yellow not dropping in off the jaw. Yellow balls in play. Yeah, you have to play the colour set you're going for, so you couldn't play the red to pop the yellow. So yeah, the reason. He, sorry, Simon. The reason he, uh, he, he imparted a lot of left hand spin was to transfer the spin onto the opposite ball. Yeah, just a little bit worried about it hitting the thick jaw and staying up. Really nicely executed. You can see him pointing his cue there, trying to work out the path of the cue ball when it cannons the red. Nicely played there from Gareth, cannon in the red to open the yellow into the corner. Yeah, another very precise cannon. Are working out the exact point of the red he was hitting to make sure he gets the position on the next ball he wants, which he's managed to do so nicely enough. It was never going to be a perfect last ball for V8 ball. He'd be happy enough. He just leaves himself enough angle to get onto it. Yeah, he really wants to leave an half-ball angle on his last yellow. Probably see him spin it in with left-hand side and should get in the eight-ball. Doesn't want to be straight. And that's not ideal. Almost got a little bit too much. Yeah, I think I'd have, I'd have left the cue ball high rather than low. I was certainly expecting him to go that way. He used to get into this one nicely. As long as he's not hampered, it's okay. I think he can get to the centre of the cue ball. Yeah, he's one of them players, is Gareth. He gets into the cue ball so well with little effort. Brilliant start from Gareth Potts. Another finish. <coughs> or a brilliant finish this time. Excellent break. And mops them up, so... Punishes the safety error from Jack Whelan. And you mentioned it, he's just stretching out his back a little bit. I know that he was wearing a heat pack yesterday. I'm not entirely sure what the issue is, but on the table, it's all going to plan, though. I'm going to take a quick look at Jack Whelan's profile. A new professional for 2022. He comes in with a former world title and a world doubles title as well. But he's had a very good 2021. One two World Rules pool tours, twice on the same weekend in a very high-class field. 
So he's a player that's won the biggest titles and in good form. So very, very much a, a tough matchup for both these players for a first round. Yeah, Jack normally has a massive break. He does it in a different way to Gareth, though. He keeps himself very much still on the shot and just lets his natural cue power do the, the power here. Watch the difference here. He's not going to jump up where Gareth does. But he has come up dry for the second time, so his break isn't working yet. Although you have to say, he's hit that one well enough. He deserved to make a ball there. Yeah, I mean, he's not hitting the break bad. He's hitting him great. He's controlled the cue ball well. I mean, look at... There's, there's ten balls past the centre pocket. Yellow balls in play. So it's another good chance for Gareth. This is from the three chances he had. Is arguably the easiest of the three. Yeah, he's going to get rid of all these yellows at the top end of the table. Then leave the one over the middle to second to last, because that connects with the yellow next to the eight ball. I think on his previous shot, he'd like to have seen both of the, the yellows drop in. It did start to track towards the pocket. It's not a, a problem that it hasn't. It would have just made life a, a fraction easier for him. It's still comfortable enough. Yeah, he's going to just screw back through the middle of the reds. Nicely played. And that's absolutely perfect. Looks in good form, Simon. He looks in very good form. It certainly took him a tournament or two to really settle down, getting back into the, the game, but... Once he got that first title on the board, it's it's the Gareth we've known for years in full flow. Three chances, three finishes, three nil ahead. Okay. Really taking it to Jack Whelan, who's going to need to find his break and need to find a chance first of any before anything else. Plenty to think about for Jack Whelan. He'd have been really looking forward to making his debut with Ultimate Paul. And he would have wanted a nice early chance to get going. That hasn't happened. And he's going to have to sit there and wait because it's going to be Gareth Potts to break next as well. And with his first break in the match, he did make a ball and make the clearance. Yeah, he's not done anything wrong, so he can't be too disappointed in himself. It's one of the toughest things in the game, isn't it? The fact that it's so severe, sometimes you can't do anything game just gets taken away from you. Yeah, can virtually guarantee now that Gareth will break and probably pot two or three balls and they'll come out really nice. It's just, you can just see the, the way the match is going. Yeah. Another opportunity to see the different style of Gareth's break and see how much he makes the cue bend. Didn't quite catch that one as clean as his first one, though. And Jack Whelan will get his first opportunity in the match. A dry break from Gareth this time. The old commentator's curse. <laughs> yeah. Won't thank you for that one. But look at that cue. He knew pretty much straight away that he didn't quite catch it as That's clean as he would have liked. Yeah, he came across the front ball. Obviously the white track towards the top right-hand side of the table. So a really good chance here for Jack Whelan. But this is where the pressure that your opponent puts on you with scoreboard pressure, especially in a short race to seven. You know, Gareth already going 3-0 up. It's really putting pressure on Jack Whelan to make this finish and get himself into the match. Do you really feel that as a player out there, that if you get your first opportunity at 3-0, the difference between that and 0-0? Yeah, and you can't do much about it, you know, if you're not getting to the table. But Jack knows deep down that the same thing can happen to Gareth. The only thing I think will affect Jack is cue ball control on this new table, new cloth. He's not really had a lot of experience on it before. Really wants to be on the left of the two yellows together 
for a second. He didn't think he was going to get there, but I think he's just about reached. He'll be delighted with that. He's played that absolutely perfect. Screw back into the red. That was such a key positional shot to land perfectly on that previous ball because the rest of it all joins up nicely. And this will sell Jack down his uh, first opportunity and he's going to clear the table. Absolutely brilliant. We give the match uh, a build-up. Fancy both players to play well, but they absolutely have both players now up and running. Four very good finishes. 3-1, though, to Gareth Potts. But it is Jack Williams to break, and I have to say, he hit his first two breaks really, really well, but came up dry. He needs his break to, to turn up now. Yeah, this is a massive, a massive frame. 4-1 or 3-2. You feel if Gareth wins this frame, then he may go on to win the match. But 3-2, it's anybody's. Yeah, and I don't think Jack will be thinking about doing anything different with his break. Just you have to believe in the fact that if you keep hitting them as well as he has, they will it will turn around, he'll make a ball or two and give himself the opportunity. Oh, he's made a ball, but he's made the wrong one. The cue ball straight into the top corner. Ball in hand, on the break line. That was a loose one from Jack Whelan. Yeah, that's a bad break there for the cue ball to go straight in off without touching another ball. That's a bad break from Jack. Looks like Gareth is eyeing up these reds. Q1 hand anywhere behind the break line, so it looks like he's trying to put the cue ball on the red on the left hand side. Extension call. Yeah, and also the red that's on the right side cushion, that may go in off the yellow in the centre pocket. Red ball's in play. Yeah, you can see that from the overhead. He's a little bit straight on this one. Needed a little angle. Well, he's deciding to take the other red. So he must be straight. A reroute for Gareth Potts. <clears throat> yeah, he's just got to be a bit careful here because he's running out of options and he needs to get rid of them two reds at the top end of the table sooner rather than later. So, place for the one on the right hand side cushion. Just see where he's pointing there with his cue. That's where he wants the cue ball. Leave a perfect angle to come down the table for his last red. And that's perfect. Can't imagine he's going to look to do anything more than just hit the gap here. Yeah, well, the key with this shot is to under it the shot rather than over it. If you over it, you may snook yourself. Oh, he's gone the other way. He's gone to come right down the bottom, and that's perfect. Well, he's played that as good as you could possibly play it. I thought he might just leave the gap and play high on it and just drift round for the eight ball. He's gone the other way, and this is perfect. 
a finish that required a reroute, but good enough to do that. High quality stuff from Gareth Potts opens up that three frame lead once again. 4 1 in front, three frames away from the next round, taking every opportunity that comes his way. And this was a, a lovely positional shot, drifting the full length of the table. Yeah, and that's a sign that he's very comfortable with his equipment now. Yeah. You know, before he was kind of guessing, he'd just come from Chinese eight ball where he's using a different cue and also different size table, balls, cloth, everything's completely different. Well, it's one of the things that's always fascinated me with your game is that you like to, you've chopped and changed throughout your whole career. You'll go for play this and then next week you'll play a nine ball tournament and then you'll play some snooker. Whereas Gareth, is, when he moved away from this game, he dedicated himself to Chinese eight ball. So it's going to take quite a bit of adjusting for him to get back into, into the sport. And it's taken him some time, but he's absolutely back to his best now. Yeah, it looks as good as ever. Eight ball, eight ball. Oh, wow. the cue ball's knocked it away. That's the closest we've seen to a golden break in the tournament so far, but the cue ball keeps it out. Have a watch of this again. Look at that cue ball. Oh, he was definitely dropping. <laughs> you can see on his face there. And look at Give it Jack <laughs> look the look. Jack. That's a great reaction from Jack. Just look at the layout of the table. The yellows, the yellows are all there. And this is why we say the break is the most important shot of the game because that eight ball goes in, it's 5-1. To be honest, even if any other ball goes in as well, it wasn't just the eight ball not going in. He came up dry, giving Jack William the opportunity. But the way these are laid out, you'd expect Gareth to go very close to clearing these up if he got a, a ball and you know, Jack wants to take them. And, it's the difference between Jack sort of almost staying in the match, really. Those new to the ultimate pool, they're wondering what we're talking about. As Jack's Whelan's positional shot just goes wrong. I'm very, very surprised he played that shot. Yeah, he's in a bit of trouble now. Yeah, he had no reason to cannon the red ball. Both yellows went in the corner. And the yellow that he played to play the plant actually went past the eight ball in the middle. I just finished off what I was about to say, and that's if you knew to ultimate pool. And with this tournament, the eight ball goes in off the break. It is a, a golden break and you win the frame. If you eight ball goes in and you foul off the break, it, it's a golden duck and you lose the frame. Jack William having to just turn the table over, finishing on nothing. That would be very disappointing as well with the layout of the table there. Yeah, and I'm not sure playing that shot he's played was the right shot. Because Gareth can have a free shot of red and leave the cue ball right there where he leaves no yellow. Extension call. I think Jack could have come off the left-hand side cushion and maybe put the yellow in the right pocket, right centre pocket, but by no means easy. Loss of turn. And that's a poor shot there from Gareth. He was trying to get the cue ball further up the table. I think he was trying to be too accurate. Yeah, just grazed the red on the way through, which he did not want. He's given Jack William another opportunity. Oh, dear. Well, he queued right across that. Yeah, great camera angle to see that. Big surprise to see Jack Whelan miss that ball. Hands an opportunity now to Gareth Potts.
Well, what, what has Gareth done there? That's a big shot, first shot. He didn't need to play that. Other ways he could have gone that he didn't need to play a double. Yeah, he had a lot of other options there, Simon, and for some reason decided to play the double. And Jack Whelan's got away with this one. You won't see that too often. I have a feeling when we get to the end of the match, we could well be talking about this frame, especially if Jack Whelan comes back to, to win. Huge moment. Jack Whelan making two pretty big mistakes in the frame, but still manages to get the frame on the board. Still trails by two frames, 4-2 behind. But he'll be very relieved to get that frame on the board, that's for sure. Sometimes when you're playing these matches, though, Simon, you, you, not, you need to miss a ball, an easy ball sometimes, to get your concentration levels higher. It almost gives you a little bit of a kick. So we just take another look at that first positional error from Jack Willian and then the, the one he missed down to the bottom right corner. And then look at this layout here. He doesn't have to play the double. There's room to get onto that ball. OK, he doesn't go to its obvious pockets, but Gareth's so good with his cue ball control, you'd, you'd fancy him to get onto that in another way. But then if he makes the double, we're saying good choice, gets his hardest ball out the way. So it's how you see it sometimes. Uh, yeah, such a great cueist is Gareth. Right. I mean, you'd back him all day long Starting to pot a ball. That's a better break there from Jack. Finally, Jack Williams' break turns up. Although it's not brilliant for him with the way the red and yellow just at the last minute come together in the top right-hand corner. Looked like it was going to be a really nice wide open finish for him. You now he's got work. Yeah, and the problem is if he takes reds, where does the one at the top right-hand side of the table go? If he takes yellows, where does the eight ball go? It looks like he's eyeing up the reds and looking to see what angle he can leave to go into his bad ball. The way the red and yellow are together at the top right, is, this isn't guaranteed to come out even if he gets the contact on it. Yeah, and I don't think he's left a perfect angle. He needs a little bit of luck here. He's got to land on this red that he's knocking out. Lovely shot. Yeah, and he had to land on it because he had no other shot if he didn't land on it. Still not a guaranteed finish. Yeah, it sounds strange to say, but it's not easy to get onto his next ball. Even though he's got one over the pocket. And what he doesn't want to do is hit one of the yellows half ball and slide down and going off in the middle. Got to find the gap here. Nicely played. It wasn't a million miles away from the centre. I controlled that one nicely. That should be the hard work in this frame done. Finishing touch is required. Yeah, and this could be a big turning point from when Gareth misses, missed the double to go 5-1 in front. I think we were all expecting once... Jack had missed the pot down to the bottom right. We were expecting Gareth just to go 5-1. He didn't, wasn't expecting any drama from there. And all of a sudden, he's going to be looking over his shoulder at 4-3. Jack Whelan makes sure that he is looking over his shoulder at 4-3. Excellent uh, break and clearance from Jack Whelan. His best break in the match, but all hinged on this breakout shot. Also, the shot that followed it needed to be precise. Yeah, that were a lot more difficult than what he made it look. Yeah, any thicker contact there, and he's, he's absolutely on nothing. So, it very, had to be very precise with that one. No doubt that Jack William would be the more relieved of the two players, or the happier of the two players. He was, as we said, staring 5-1 in the face, and all of a sudden it's 4-3. Gareth Potts has got work to do into the second half of the match now with the match clock. Race to seven, so Gareth three frames away. And 
just look how the tide has changed. Once again dry from Gareth Potts. So Jack William with an opportunity now to tie things up. And it's a pretty decent one. A couple of shots required. Extension call. Well, he'd love to take yellows, but he can't pot one. So forced into taking reds. Red balls in play. All the reds lined up on the right-hand side cushion. Makes it a little bit tricky. Yeah, he'd love to be able to just flick the middle one of the three reds on the right-hand cushion. It's a sort of finish for me that if you're very precise and controlled through this finish, that can make it look a lot easier than it is, but it doesn't take much for this to go wrong. Yeah, and I think he's landed a little bit straight on this red. Well, he's going to play the double. Needs to play it slowly and flick the red out. Lovely shot. Perfect. Both sides of that shot really nicely. left himself a lovely little angle to get the cue ball out from the cushion although I thought he might go a bit further than that yeah I'm very surprised it didn't push the cue ball to the top cushion that would have been natural angle to come back for the red gotta be careful well played First clearance and Jack Whelan ties the score up. Scores up was 4 0 down, looked like he was going 5 1, but it is 4 4. And it will be Jack Whelan to break next. This match really has turned on that missed double from Gareth Potts. Both players three frames away from the next round. We're approaching the 15 seconds a shot portion of the match as well for the final 10 minutes which can also bring in plenty of drama. Gareth just staring into space, trying to stay in the zone. <clears throat> Frame nine. Jack Willen to break. Four frames all. There wasn't right correctly there. Did you notice it didn't break? Didn't open at all. Let's have a look at this on replay. Just missed the contact, but yeah, not the break he was looking for. This is now a big frame, really. It's a messy little table. Extension call. I think he's going to take red, sir. It looks like there's a chance on red, certainly not one on yellows. Not an easy one, anyway. Red balls in play. Actually, it looks more congested than it is. It is all the reds actually have pockets. He's just been able to connect them up. 
Yeah, he's just worried about the eight ball. That's the one that's going to cause him the most problems. He's going to pot this red and come down the right-hand side of the table, giving himself the option of three possible reds. It's on the red at the bottom. Looks like he's got just enough angle to get out. It's difficult to tell. Might be a little bit straight. He was a little bit too straight, so decides to just nudge his ball over and weld the cue ball to the yellow. You don't always have to go going home and go for those finishes. You have to try and find that balance between wanting your opponent to come back to the table and taking him out yourself. Yeah, he's played a clever little shot there as Jack. Extension call. Gareth's in all kind of trouble here. Not a lot you can do when you're welded to your only ball you can see. Well, that's a decent shot there from Gareth. He's tied one of the reds up, but problem being now, he's left a perfect angle on the red to break it back out. Sometimes all you can do is give your opponent as much work as possible. No, nope, Jack Wheeler not interested, continuing to wait. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that shot, to be honest. I think Gareth can double the yellow up and down, pot his red, and then Jack's got to go for it, basically. Oh, he didn't want that. Well, he was trying to play the shot that you called, but double kiss has ruined that, and this will be a chance for Jack. Well, and he still does need to play that cannon to open up that bad red that Gareth put safe a couple of shots ago. We may see Jack plant the red onto the red, then play the double on the other red and screw into his ball that's tied up. Lovely shot from Jack Whelan, opens up his bad ball whilst making the double. Not only that, Simon, he's got the option now to cut either red in either corner and cannon into the yellows to open the eight ball. He doesn't have to go into them, but for me it's a free shot. Just heard that beep in the background. That means we're going to the 15 seconds a shot part of the match. 15 second shot clock in play. He's decided not to move the yellows. And therefore the eight ball. I think he's just thinking about leaving it where it is and backing himself to, to land on it to top corner. No, he's moving it now. Yeah, and I didn't like him playing it that way because he had to land on that red after planting it, and it wasn't a gimme to land on it. Now he's going to have to cut the red in and come back across to where he is standing there to leave the eight ball into the centre pocket. That's perfect. No mistakes with the eight ball. Jack Whelan gets himself in front for the first time. 5-4 ahead, two frames away from the next round. What a turnaround we've seen here. And it all hinged on that one shot from Gareth Potts. It's been completely turned around from there. 
lucky shot in the frame for Jack Whelan was that double. Followed up with this breakout shot for the eight ball. Yeah, we said earlier in the match that that double that Gareth went for could come back to haunt him. And at this moment in time, that's exactly what's happening. So he missed that double at 3-1 in front. Sorry, 4-1 in front, wasn't it? Gareth Potts break. It's all gone against him since. Very important, he finds a ball now to keep himself in the match. And he's dry once again. His break has absolutely deserted him. He's hitting the break well, just can't find a ball. Extension called. Yeah, and a lot of the players on the circuit talk about the pool gods. Yeah. And this is exactly what you're seeing. The game has turned on its head. Now Jack William likes the look of reds. And they are laid out really nicely for him. Every red's got a pocket, everything in the open. Just about keeping control of that cue ball and finding the route. Well, I'm very surprised he's played that. That would have been my second to last red to get on the red that's next to it and then the eight ball into the opposite centre. He's going to play some good shots. So finishing just out on the previous shot. Now things are getting starting to get a little bit trickier. Not nicely on the next ball. Tricky cut back. Just squeezes by the red. Now he's back into control and in better position. He wouldn't have wanted to leave the, the red on the right-hand side below the centre pocket and the red on the left-hand side below the centre pocket is his last two balls. Yeah, and that's why I said leave the red that he potted earlier on where it was because after potting this red, it was basic stun shot. Now he's got to play a real nice shot to get on his last red. Which he has done nicely enough. Doesn't have to do a huge amount with the cue ball on this one, just drop it in. Well, flicks the near jaw and still drops in. Yeah, and that was the same pocket that he missed that red in. Yeah. That one was a little closer. No mistakes with the eight ball. So Jack Whelan one frame away with another reverse clearance of another dry break from Gareth Potts. And this match has really turned on its head. Gareth Potts may well have played his last shot in this tournament. Jack Whelan will break off for the match. Yeah, and it's been a brilliant standard, Simon. Both players played brilliantly. Some All the mistakes happened in, in one frame. Yeah, some dry breaks, some great breaks. Yeah, the mistakes from both players were all in the same frame. Pretty much everything else has been very clean and clinical from both players. Frame 11. Jack Whelan. So here we go, Jack Whelan breaking off Leading six frames for the match. And he makes the ball. Makes a couple, so he's going to get the chance. What a break that is. Is there any balls left on the table? Yeah, they're flying in. A couple of balls come together just at the end there, top left-hand side of the table. Extension call. Yeah, he's got to go yellows. He's just going to stun this cue ball up about five or, five or six inches, and that's perfect. Pot the yellow in the top right-hand corner, stun over and try and bring the yellow that's tied up. 
Well, he's deciding to go a different way. I think he's going to try and go into his bad ball now. Doesn't want to go into him too hard, though. Could do we just hit in the cushion first before the red. Lovely. Really nicely played. not the shot he wanted to play just when he saw the finishing line gets the positional side of that shot all wrong yeah I'm very surprised he cannot into the yellow oh what a shot recovers with a great double to the corner so this eight ball for the match No mistakes, Jack Whelan books his place in the next round with a brilliant turnaround performance. 3-0 down, comes back to win it by seven frames to four and he marches on to the next round where he will play the winner of Scott Gillespie and Hitam Patel. That was an incredible match from two great players.